welcome to the se second episode of Wellness From Within. Today's show is going to be about fear-based medicine. What is that? We touched on it briefly in our very first show. And if you didn't see that, I encourage you to go back and uh, watch it because it'll prepare you for everything that we're bringing in this second episode. What is, what is fear-based medicine? What is Western? What is Eastern? What is alternative? Why do we have all these choices? Why can't I just have one choice? And wh why, why do I keep picking the wrong, the wrong thing? Why, why do I pick the wrong exercise? Or why do I pick the wrong food? Or why do I just not know what's going on? And so I go on the internet and I look up all this stuff and I haven't a clue as to what is going on. And why are we just making bad choices? Did I get that right, Miss Marie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, the Western model or the traditional model of medicine is governed by the American Medical Association. So you have your okay. doctors, your nurses, your surgeons, your hospital settings, all of that kind of thing, your, your drug companies, everything that they have a certain, um, the way they do studies and they peer review their studies and everything else. You get okay. into more alternative medicine, it's much more broad. Okay. So now you can have anything from a natural path to a uh, doctor who's decided to go more alternative, a, a nurse practitioner. You can have small adjuncts of a nurse who's even taken her business that way. You could have an acupuncturist. You could have all kinds of different offshoots. Sometimes you just have uh, an energy practitioner. You might have a massage therapist who all of a sudden delves into supplements. You have your chiropractor who decides they're going to go to seminars and delve into treating your illnesses too. So it's so broad, you don't okay. know how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. Where the other one, you can... My, my big pet peeve with it, so, and this is an extreme situation, you take a cancer patient and I help people navigate both systems on what they choose. I don't decide what's right for somebody. That's their choice. Mm -hmm. So if I, if you come to me and you say you have stage one breast cancer, um, triple negative, okay. I can go research it, find out what your, your statistics are for survival, what treatments are available, what chemos they use, or what if there's any um, targeted treatments. I can find out what your survival rate is. I can also find out the side effects mm -hmm. on what's going to damage you or not. The alternative world's much harder. There's no way to do that. Okay. So when you're struggling from cancer, and I fought with a bunch of practitioners about it, how is the person supposed to make that educated decision? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Correct. But a lot of times when somebody's going alternative, it's because they fear this one because of all that information. So they go to the other they go from one side of the scale to the other, thinking that it's an easier decision. Right. And that and it's this all person, natural. It can't it hurt, hurt me. me. Correct. But what people don't understand is herbs are drugs. And they start mixing multiple together. But where is the studies to say it's okay to mix all those together? There aren't any. They're saying they are, but it's hard for the average person to, to find. find. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm out there. I'm looking. I'm not finding them. So... I've talked to the practitioners firsthand. I mean, I have people that go to practitioners that come up with their own protocols because of what they've learned. And that's even more dangerous medicine. But the fear is so big because of what they've read on the internet and the information that's available. And anybody who watches a drug commercial now, oh. all they do is scream about the side effects. Correct. So now, in some ways, that's good because it's making them think twice about taking a drug. And if you need the drug, you should take it. But if there's something you can do to your body, to correct that so you don't need it, you should think twice about it. Mm -hmm. But supplements can do the same thing to you. I see people frying their livers, their digestive system from over supplementation all the time, muscle wasting, you know, overtaking magnesium, shutting down their systems. It's, it's craziness, the things people are doing in the, in the name of it's all natural, it can't hurt you because they're so afraid of the, altern the, the traditional model of medicine. Wow. And there's many other reasons of fear-based medicine. I mean, the practitioners are pretty good at fearing you as well. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, if you go to somebody and all they do is tell you not to do something else, you need to leave. Because it's not for them to decide what's right for you. It's for them to educate, educate you, you in what they know. Mm -hmm. And then you take this one and this one, you sit with it, what's right for me. But there's a lot of practitioners, don't do this, don't take the antibiotic, don't take that, don't take that, take this. And that's dangerous medicine because now when you need the medicine, you're afraid to take it. You're terrified. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen cancer patients finally want to take it, but they can't 
They're so afraid. They're so afraid. I've seen people with severe reflux that finally need the medications because the alternative just didn't work for them. Mm -hmm. And that's okay that it didn't work. Right. They tried, but they can't take it for fear of all the side effects. So it goes on and on that the fear dictates it so badly and they're afraid of tests. I've seen people not do their colonoscopies because they read something about how it strips the colon and it's unnecessary and it's this. They were stage four and they had to have half their colon removed because they're so afraid to from stuff the they've read. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to help you to start learning to read the information properly, to assess what's right for you. Why is it there? Mm -hmm. You know, people don't understand. Some things were done in the past because we had health issues to bring them forward, to correct them. They think it's all this big conspiracy, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is good medicine. You know, and it still needs to be used alongside the other things that you choose. You know, um, there's so many ways people, sometimes the fear of not wanting to upset the practitioner. I've seen that as well. Yeah. Right. And that's on both sides as well, that right. you don't want to upset your doctor. If, if, I, if I say that I don't want to, to take that medicine, he's going to be really mad at me and not talk to me again. So I'm just going to do it. And the same with the practitioner yep. that, well, I don't want to upset them that I, I don't, I don't like what we're doing. Can we do something else? And again, not speaking up and for yourself and understanding what you and your body is needing. And my favorite one is the fear of your practitioner knowing your body better than you, that you don't know it better. They're telling you, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. They call it gaslighting, I think it is. Yes. And it makes it really hard for a person to fight for what they need. But I see so many people taking, well, they said I had to. I go, why? You know, you should never go to somebody and take six supplements right out of the gate because you don't know which one's working, which one's not, mm -hmm. which one's interacting with anything. Yep. Take one, mm -hmm. see what happens. Then take another, see yep. what happens. But they come home with piles, you know, and the fear, the fear is just too much for them. I, if I don't take it, I, I see people that can't get off supplements because they're wow. terrified because they've been told so many times and they've read you so must, many you things. Must, you must. Well, uh, you're going to age, you you're going to do yeah. this, your skin's going to do this, your digestion, you know. Some of these practitioners will do this blood work and tell you you have parasites. Well, you tell somebody who has high anxiety that they have parasites, parasites. in their body. Now they feel them crawling. <laughs> they're not sleeping. At <laughs> these practitioners don't know that. Correct. They don't know who they're telling these things to. Then they're going to their doctor and the doctor's like, you can't feel your parasites. You can't see, and you, everybody has parasites Correct. to some level. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this rare person doesn't, but we have to be careful because we're really stopping people from making good choices for themselves by scaring the crap out of them. Mm -hmm. or, or deciding, do I, is this really happening to me? And trying to figure out, am I just listening to that person? They said, oh, you've got parasites. So now I've got parasites. Well, how do you know? So you don't even ask. So you just jump into that. And then I have right. this and then I have that. So on both sides, we have people that are, are listening 100% and diving into the deep end of the pool without taking a breath and going, wait a minute, let's slow this down for a second. How do I feel about this? What, how does my body feel about this? Am I recognizing? They don't, though. The fear is yeah. driving them so much. You know, the internet, I tell people, if you go on a website and it gives you medical information and there's a pop-up, get off of it. Because mm -hmm. somebody's making money, money off, off of you, you and they are going to do their best to make sure you're reading more each mm -hmm. second. If it's dry and boring and it has conclusions at the end, it's probably where you need to be reading. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say in, um, in full transparency that um, everybody hates TikTok and, and I'm sure it's... I don't get involved in it. I yeah, I, um, it. I, I, I didn't until a couple months ago and I just happened to have clicked on and it was um, a way to massage your feet. Nice. And I went, where are the bad guys? Well, I think where's the this? I and, think and, then, and like anything, anything there's else. good and bad and right. everything. So it's where you go with it. Right. And so that was my point about TikTok is I was like, right. oh, God, that's terrible. But I have gotten the most wonderful videos that have made me think and go similar to what you're saying and going, 
gee, that looks really interesting. I'd like to try that, mm -hmm. that exercise that I would never have thought of before. I'm not saying you shouldn't go out and search. Absolutely, because that's where you're going to find your but answers. Again, you just need good radar. Mm -hmm. So by going within, okay, so on my website, it's marienotig.com. It's K-N-O-E-T-I-G, marienotig.com. Okay. And when you first click, is a meditation, it's free. And it sits you quiet for three minutes and it has you to ask to see what you need to see every day. And what you're doing is you're going inward, you're connecting with your body within, you're connecting with that voice you don't like to hear on a normal mm -hmm. basis. And you're asking it to speak louder. And if you have a true intent for that, it's not going to speak to you right then. You're not going to have a voice in your head or this guide talking to you. What's <laughs> going to happen is when your mind's distracted, you're doing the dishes, you're vacuuming the floor, you're driving in the car, you're going to have epiphanies of you should or shouldn't. You're going to read something and you're going to get that gut feeling. If you ignore it, it's going to be less and you're going to, it's muted. You listen, it's going to get louder each time. Mm. So the, sort of like the uh, hair on the back of the neck when you ignore it. Right. And the more you do it and the more you truly mean it when you do it, the louder it speaks. Wow. Well, I th Because I th you're asking yourself to come forward and you're putting Everything the dialogue else behind. behind. You, right? So mm -hmm. you're making that personal commitment to yourself and that intent and you're bringing yourself forward. And that's not a bad thing. No. To, but to, so we say all the time, and I'm going to throw all these things at you. You, you, you know me by now that That's I'll throw okay. these things. And because of what I hear from the general public and what people say to me, and, I, and I'll be like, well, why would you say that? You can actually answer them. So why do we say believe in yourself, but not in this instance? I, I, I look at people because, and say... Because medicine... We went from the battlefields of biting on a bullet and maggots eating our wounds to chicken soup to the doctor helping us get through pneumonia to all of a sudden credentialed and we felt inferior. And the credentials just got bigger and bigger where all of a sudden the chicken soup went away mm -hmm. and they're trying to bring the chicken soup back. But now we're bringing the chicken soup back in a way that's coming from credentials again in a supplement world that's the same as there's no difference. Drug. There's no, they're There's they're no just, difference. The, the supplement companies make as much as the drug companies do mm -hmm. to a point. You know, they're out there promoting their stuff. We need to go back in. That doesn't mean it's all bad. I'm not saying that because right. they all but have their not play. Right it's like, what wrong. can you do first so you don't have to use either? Mm -hmm. What can you do first? Right. And that's that's a big question. So as we get into this, say we're, we're going to talk about a chiropractor our, our next show. Let's try that. Okay. So connecting to your body within, why wouldn't you use a chiropractor? Because maybe you, I mean, I hear people tell me all the time, I'm going to stroke out. It's going to break my neck. You can oh, yeah. crack me. People think when they crack again. you, they're cracking your bones. If they cracked your bones, you would be broken. Correct. And it's we just have gas a lot of broken escaping people. from the joints. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you have to ask yourself, why do I fear a chiropractor? Because you don't even know why. But they're not doctors, Marie. Th that's the other thing. I, so that's but you ask you. yourself, why do I think that? Do you know that? Did you look up what their training was? Did you look at what? So, what, we, but what they we have went these beliefs, yeah. but we don't even know why, and it stops us from even trying it. Because I could tell you, I wouldn't be sitting here as straight as I am and as healthy as I am without a chiropractor, mm -hmm. because I was so crooked with the nerve damage down my right side. So I need, I don't use it anymore because I can do a lot of things myself, and I'm to a point that I can self-adjust now where I couldn't for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, but again, with the chiropractor, how do you pick a good one? What makes a good chiropractor? Uh, is he backing it up with the tissue piece? Because you shouldn't just be going for adjustments over and over again, not Correct. doing the tissue work, not realigning your body, not strengthening your core, because then you're just going to eventually lock down because fool me once, shame on you, is what you do to your body over Correct. time when you just keep using chiropractic because it's an out. Mm -hmm. I don't have to take the, the time. Easy way. Mm -hmm. Right. It should be backed up in a full a full toolbox that you right. have for yourself mm -hmm. so you can eventually wean off the chiropractor right and be able to and oh and go when you need to with as in my son his back is glass so the next time that right it's it's but that chiropractor said to him right away you got to be part of this process correct and, and that's a and good chiropractor yeah. when he tells you, you have to be part of this process. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't. Some of them do. Like I said, there's many types. I've heard of some that adjust everything, even your feet and your hands. Some only adjust the spine. Some only use an activator. Some only do the C1s. Correct. So 
Which one do you need? Well, that's a good question. You need to go inside and you need to figure out well, what hurts, know, write it down, and yeah, then you need to know where your discussion. body's at for starters. Yeah. You need to know what's wrong. Then you need to know, is it more tissue? Is it more bony structure? Will it help me to do the tissue along with that? But I have to have a stretching and a core stability program with that because I want to age gracefully and start getting my life back. Well, exactly. We want we want to do everything we wanted to do after raising children. I, I, I find myself talking with my friends and we're like, I thought we were supposed to do a whole bunch of things now after the, after children. And we're so busy chasing our tails that, you know, hey, it is our turn. But if you're not healthy, if you're if you're not taking care of chronic issues, if you're not aware when your hip is off and your ribs and you're just going to continue, like you said, to you know what's funny gather about baggage. That, it goes back to the chaos breeds chaos. So if you go on my website, I have free ebooks on there. And one of them is a daily check in. Mm hmm. And all you have to do at nighttime is just to lay there quietly and check in. How was my day? Were my stress levels out of control? Okay, so what do I need to do tomorrow to get them back in check? Was my nutrition sound? Because nutrition is the key factor to a good day. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I don't have to eat breakfast. I don't have to do it. Your body's struggling and your brain's struggling. Correct. So if you can balance that out, your life's going to change. So the more you balance all that running between your tail and everything else, you're going to be able to foresee everything. People laugh at me because I'll make a plan to do something and I'll do six things at once and it's all done way before they even started to think that I was going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> it's the running joke with my family, my neighbors, because when you balance yourself, you see things that you wouldn't normally see. So you don't, you're cutting corners where you can, you're double doing things that you can. You're already you're already set Six up. Steps ahead. Everything's set up. Yep. Everything's done. My boys say that to me. It's, 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 I always wondered why. There's like, well, why do you do it right away? Because I know if I wait that something's going to come along and I need to deal with that. Now I've got two things that I'm dealing with. Right. So someone says, um, you know, do you know where that check is? Yeah, I'll go get it. No, 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 no. Whenever. No, I need to get it. Here right. it is check right. it off the checklist, right. stress level is down instead of all of a sudden panicking. And we do that. And we need, to, again, I think the website checking in, but also have a little notebook that Absolutely. during your day and, and find make some out. notes. You know, I have a, a sleep meditation on there as well that you lay down before bed and you start to assess your body. You start to wear the day off. You do some deep breathing. You do your daily check-in. It's like 10 minutes to do every night and you sleep a lot better because now you've taken all that stress off. You've reprocessed. Mm -hmm. And then when you sleep better, you wake up rested, you wake up with clarity, you're out of chaos. But the minute you start a day in chaos, it's going to be it's chaos. It's going to get worse. Because you're not present to stop the train. Mm -hmm. So we spend time, ladies, taking care of our nails and making them look pretty. We do, you know, our makeup and our creams and it's all good. Believe me, there's, that's what you want to do. That's great. I do. <laughs> but where's the balance yes. for the body? Yes. We're leaving that piece off. If you don't have a healthy body, you're not going to have healthy nails. Right. Oh, so you're going to go get fake ones. Again, your choice. But that's but you just see where I'm going with. Is. I have a lot of people with osteoporosis and the fear of doing the exercises, the fear, the fear of doing the exercises and changing their lifestyle and adding in the weight training and adding in the different workouts that they're not accustomed to is way bigger than the fear of breaking a bone. Mm -hmm. And that upsets me more than anything. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really a big issue for a lot of women that didn't come from working out at a young age. Women that started young, played sports and worked out, they don't care. They'll work out, they'll get sweaty, they'll get whatever. But there's a whole bunch of women. And now I'm seeing it in men because they're desk jockeys. They're not used to Correct. being sweaty too. Mm -hmm. So they have the osteoporosis and everything else. And the fear of changing their lives to, to help themselves is bigger than the damage that's going to occur. It's going to occur because they're not taking care of it. Yeah. Goodness gracious me. Like I said, so fear-based medicine is very, very real. And once you sit with that and figure out how you process thought and what you fear and why you fear it, then you can take the next step in helping yourself. Because just to say, I'm going to 
take this new health challenge and I'm going to go to a chiropractor. If you fear it, it's not going to happen. Correct. Because you're not going to pick the right chiropractor because right. you're already reading stuff and you're putting down. up yep. a wall. You know, it, it has to do with everything that you do. You, you have to sit there with an open mind and understand how you feel about something before you do it. You know, I can't get people to try new foods because they have these aversions <laughs> to something that happened before. Yeah. So they're robbing their body of nutrients. They're afraid to learn how to cook. They're afraid to touch a stove. They're afraid to make a recipe. Oh, you don't know how many people don't. Well, look at Market Basket. There's so many to-go items. Correct. I mean, we feed it, but you, you can't be healthy unless you learn how to spend some time in your kitchen. Correct. Make sure what you know what ingredients are going in to the food, which is then going into your body. So there you go. There's the, uh, the circle. So why do again. you feel that fear that why is that so hard for you to take that step and do it? So you can't take the next step in managing your health and building a toolbox until you realize why you pull away. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people that won't go get rechecked from a doctor after they, because they had a bad experience. Well, maybe you need a different doctor. Maybe you need to talk to your doctor about it. Nope, they shut down and they're done. Not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, in the stories you hear of what people fear. I had one person had cancer and somebody told him that everybody died when they had chemo. And so he wasn't doing chemo. Now, this man was an intelligent, college educated man. And I said, everybody dies when they have chemo. And he's looking at me, he goes, yeah. I go, where's that? I thought you were educated. <laughs> Can you read? Go and read. Do you, do you ask people if they've ever had chemo? To the point where he wasn't going to do it and he ended up doing it. Mm -hmm. But he was buying into it because his fears were so big. And they were being fed. They were being fed. So you have to ask yourself, who is the they? Mm -hmm. or the thing that you're letting control your destiny. Correct. Or, or take your choices away from you. They do which take your choices away Which if in any other situation, you. you would never right. allow someone to take that choice away from right. you. But yet, yeah. here you are, sometimes potentially life or death, healthy or not healthy, and you're letting somebody else make that decision for you? I mean, I have a, a good a dear friend, and I said to her, I said, I know you struggle with your nutrition. I know you struggle eating right. I said, just try my nutrition program. You can eat all the food you're eating now. It's just imbalance. It doesn't work. I go, well, first of all, you've never read it. <laughs> Second of all, you've never tried it. Yeah. And I go, you keep trying these extreme ones where you have to buy all these special foods, make all these special foods, and do all these calorie deprivations. Why don't you just try it? Mm -hmm. It's too Why easy. Why don't you feed it's your body? It's too easy. It's too easy. Sign me up. It's too easy. That's what she says. It can't work. I go, what inside of you means says it can't work? You I don't just, understand. I I'm, I'm afraid. It has to be this. It has to be that. It, the only way it's going to work is if I deprive myself and I give up everything. Oh, Lordy. Because we've programmed ourselves that you can't be healthy and lose weight and be fit unless, unless you, you don't yourself. eat. Right. Yep. right. I will never give up chocolate. I've said it here. <laughs> and uh, in the summertime, soft chocolate ice cream, soft serve. Sorry. I crave it and I'm not giving it up. <laughs> and like I said, so you can take the fear in so many different directions. It's crazy. But what we need to do again, sit down, be, be within yourself, be home, hear yourself, listen, see, feel, smell, touch. It sounds ridiculous, but it's not because you do that. You do that when you buy a car. You do that when you decide whether you're going to buy a dress. Why are we not doing it for our bodies, for ourselves? Because without we don't that, think we don't it, have We don't anything. think it has any power because it doesn't come in a package. But yet we do have all the power. Like I said, that meditation on my website, I truly believe that if everybody did it every day and meant it, we would live in a very different world because it would be really hard to go against that little voice. Correct. And if everybody was doing... and everybody's sort of on the same page. I'm not saying everybody has to believe the same thing, but if everybody is doing it and finding their true self and hearing and listening, right. what a wonderful world this would be that we're not right. but we're beating all up each other. puppets to someone mm -hmm. else's fear-based agenda right now. And it's, it's tainting everything that we do mm -hmm. where we can't even hear someone else have a conversation, whether it's medicine, whether it's about sports, no matter what it is, it's just, it's driven so much that we aren't making conscious decisions yep. anymore. So the only way to start truly making a conscious decision and find out if you are is to start going back home. Well, 
here's a thought, everybody. This is my challenge. Turn off the television for 15 to 20 minutes before bed. Do your little routines, brush your teeth and all that stuff that you do. And then lay down, go on the website, lay down and do a little assessment. Don't listen to the boob tube, to the television. <laughs> listen to you, which is the truth. So that's my challenge. Try that a couple of times this week. Come back in uh, at the end of next month, write down everything that happened and then listen Come to the show again and see what we have to present. And, and uh, I, I think the, the web funny thing, too, is people will say to me, I listened, but it didn't work out. But you can't do it just once. I uh, know you can't do it just once. And sometimes that not working out brings you to the next step of what you need. Right. Don't don't right. stop because it, well, it didn't work. Well, you need to find you need to right. try the next thing. Right. Until you find what works for you, because that's why we're individuals. Right. That's Sometimes why we're you unique. kiss a lot of frogs, <laughs> but it sends you in the direction that's in front of you. You can't get to something that's not there yet. So yep. your your body is going to guide you to what you can get to till you get to the answer. I love it. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed having both, <coughs> excuse me, Marie and myself, Jocelyn, and that you join us for the next show and um, share this with all your friends and join us next time.